Hey guys, and welcome to a showdown featuring the Regal High Elves led by the Norm up against 47 and his vile and disgusting horde of greenskins. We are going to be on the altar of ultimate darkness here, one of my least favourite multiplayer maps personally, but it does allow for some pretty messy early engagements as you can't actually see your opponent's force early on unless you do have some flying troops. Now for the forces of the High Elves here, we do have a front line with a mixture of rangers on the flank with the elite swordmasters of Hoef in this centre pocket. These guys are bad to the bone elite warriors who we don't get to see terribly often. They're probably here to counter black orcs and they do a decent amount of AP damage as well well to help them take down some of the larger threats. In the secondary line we do have triple archers here, they're cheerfully cheap, do some pretty good consistent damage over the course of a battle and have fantastic range. It looks like they are going to be accompanied by a mange of metal coming with Plague of Rust to lower the armour of their enemy, allowing these guys to punch a little bit above their weight without having to go with the additional cost of Sisters of Avalon. Now protecting these spearmen on either flank we do have a unit of spearmen, fantastic at pushing away the light cavalry the greenskins favour. We also have triple Illyrian Reavers in the back line. One of my favourite shock cavalry in the game, they are incredibly cheap and disgustingly fast, as well as packing a decent punch. People don't really realise these guys hit very hard with that 40 charge bonus. They can certainly do some disgusting work. Up in the skies we do have Alario the Radiant coming in with Tempest, Shield of Thorns, Earthblood and of course the Star of Avalon up on top of her Mighty Eagle here. And we also have an Arcane Phoenix, a unit we don't get to see terribly often. It can certainly pack a punch and does come in as well with some pretty nifty abilities like the Ember Storm, which hopefully we will see today, as well as Fiery Rebirth which can allow of course to restore itself. Now we have a very wide green skin force, which looks pretty bad ass, with the Morgrub's mangy marauders, as well as a ton of forest goblin spider rider archers pushing forward and being a bit of the vanguard pressure. For the main battle line, it looks like we do have a mixture of goblins and savage orc biggins. People seem to favour savage orc biggins quite a lot recently, especially over black orcs, and they're pretty decent all round. Very low armour, so the archers can certainly pierce their skin very quickly, but they have a nice little bonus versus large, and they will chew through spearmen very, very quickly. It looks like in uh, reserve we do have some regiment of renowned goblins as well to eat peak loons, as well as a core of archers consisting of orc arrow boys, as well as the rusty arrows, which is a classic combination. The rusty arrows sunder armour, allowing the orc boys to punch above their weight. It looks like we just have more goblins and savage orc biggins dotted around. For the leadership core, we do have Grom the Paunch here coming in with, it looks like, the Lucky Banner. So see, yeah, Lucky Banner as well as the Great Un is here, a nice little buff, and he's here with his little uh, fellow goblin riding dirty uh, up on top of that banner there. So alongside Grom, it looks like we do have a giant river troll hag coming in with Spirit Leech, and I believe that's Doom and Darkness. Let's have a quick look. It is indeed Soul Blight, so Soul Blight minus 30 armor and 30% base weapon damage, and Spirit Leech. Looks like that's going to be it for the build. Looks like there's some Forest Goblin Spider Rider Archers as well, or uh, basic uh, Riders, not Archers, in the distance there. I'd like to see them a little bit closer to the front line, but we'll see how they do pop in here and uh, do some decent damage. So it looks like early on, Alario is going to be forced back here, as the Forest Goblin Spider Rider Archers do get a tiny bit of poke, but she's not going to be too worried, as the Elven Archers do sing, and arrows are launched down into the enemy skirmishers. Going to be doing some okay damage as well, but nothing too crazy, as the front lines do get ready to engage here. Now the Goblins, of course, are going to get absolutely chewed apart by the Swordmasters of Hoef, but in comes Grom, and he's going to be running over those elite troops. We have not a care in the world, he has a far uh, enough mass as you can see by his big belly to push through. And he does have to pop the lucky banner here, it looks like an assassination attempt was made by Lariel and the Arcane Phoenix. Not the worst assassination troops in this matchup, of course because of the fire damage of the Phoenix is really going to help out against the regenerating Grom and River Troll Hagen. You can see straight away the Phoenix with Shield of Thorns popped has darted in here and is going to be doing huge damage to this giant River Troll Hag every time it does indeed connect. Looks like the rangers and swordsmen are getting chewed up pretty quickly by these savage orc biggins. It's not going too well for them. We do have a big spirit leech coming down as well. But it looks like the giant river troll hag has indeed been terrified and forced back from the battle. Nice star of Avalon going on these sword masters of Hoef, but the Hoefs are getting pretty pummeled in the front line. Lyran Rivers darting back, but at least they did get the giant river troll hag. 
in the back line. The archers are doing relatively well, being consistently online, but it looks like now Forest Goblin Spider Eyes have forced a way back. But Liam Reavers going to be coming in and pinning these guys in, and with that lovely charge bonus, should be able to force them back relatively quickly here. Looks like the mage is even getting in on the action as well. As for the rest of the front line, Swords Masters have been dealt with. They've done pretty good damage back as well. The consistent fire from the rusty arrows as well as all these archers and skirmishers is really starting to hurt them quite a bit. Phoenix is popping around though, only up to 8 kills, and that looks like that was a Lariel, so up to 4 kills, not doing very good at all yet, but has managed to terrify quite a few units, and now Grom is in a pretty dangerous situation here, it's quite hazardous, certainly wants to flee from the situation as we have a Earth-Blooded and Shield of Thorned Arcane Phoenix here going ham, while Lariel does cover it behind there for a bit of backline protection. Archers are falling back and trying to skirmish. They're one of the best answers for these savage orcs, but especially if the war pops, they're going to get chewed through disgustingly quickly as the spearmen try to hold the line where possible. And savage orcs are just starting to overwhelm the high health force. In the distance, though, Alien Reavers are chasing down routing troops, which is some good micromanagement. It looks like the Phoenix could pop back here as well. Nice to see like a flame storm coming down on the quite compact Savage Orc Biggins, who are kind of getting pinned in here by the Spearmen. It looks like great minds think alike, and it is actually going to come down and do that glorious flame storm animation, roasting those Savage Orc Biggins. Their health dropping quite rapidly there. So they take huge damage, and Lario comes in with the follow up. Have a Grom is here to support as well. Now in the back line, these Alien Reavers are probably over chased a little bit, need to come back, put some pressure on the Orc Arrow Boys and Durosti Arrows as this missile core has been allowed to fire for the majority of the game. And as you can see, the uh, High Elves are suffering for it. So we have Alien Reavers, Spearmen, all breaking in different directions. Over on the right hand flank, Rangers up to 69 kills and uh, taking down the Night Goblins with uh, deadly efficiency there. However, the Alien Reavers have been pushed back as well. And now there's consistent fire coming on these guys, they're not going to get too far. So it probably is going to be a question of can the Arcane Phoenix carry here with the uh, healing of Alariel? And you can see good management of the battlefield as well, using the added mobility of the flying units to bounce around between combats, save their own troops, as well as uh, sniping and isolating enemy troops. So good play there. Grom desperately uh, trying to get in to assassinate Alariel, but it's really risky with this Arcane Phoenix on the hunt as well, which is now double bronze chevron, up to 40 kills, and that fire damage is really going to help. So Grom has regeneration, and as I'm sure most of you guys are aware, any troop which does have regeneration does get extra damage from fire, because uh, fire burns through the capabilities of regeneration. So goblins have forced themselves a little bit close here, but Grom has been terrified, but that's not the worst thing for him. They should be able to regenerate some health and loop back around. He needs to get into the protection of this arrow core here and allow his uh, combat troops to do the dirty work. Forest Goblin Spider Rider archers are, you know, compromising archers, but at the same time they're going to be getting dragged down by spearmen. It looks like the archers have used uh, most of their ammunition despite the fact a lot of the time there's been a lot of pressure coming in from the greenskins. On the right-hand flank, Savage Orc Biggins are being disgracefully chased off by spearmen. who are kind of poking at their bums with long spears there. And up in the skies, Alario can now do a bit of healing as she has popped an arcane conduit. Get a nice earth blood on her on the Phoenix will always be good value. The archers on this right-hand side, though, are compromised and the Savage Orc Biggins are going to be having an absolute field day. Looks like an assassination attempt is going to be going down, but not before another flame storm comes down. Great micro here by the greenskin player, however, managing to pull out from the majority of that flame storm, not taking too much damage there. So a good counter micro coming in. Looks like the Arcane Phoenix, up to 75 kills, is going to be going after Grom once more. He's desperately trying to finish off Alariel with another Earthblood yet going down. And a Star of Avalon, she is certainly going nowhere. You can see her health absolutely bouncing up there as a Grom finds himself in a very sticky situation. His big flame attacks coming in as the claws try to rip and tear the chariot apart. And they do indeed do that. The Phoenix will be feasting tonight. Although uh, they'll probably turn into like a troll Phoenix, which would be a pretty horrible sight to see. But anyway, looks like with Grom being destroyed there, the Greenskins do lose heart here and break away and you know, desert the battlefield in a very close game, a Pyrrhic victory indeed for the High Elves. So very well played to the Norm and 47, a very close game with some pretty cool tactical choices on both sides. Massive shout out uh, to the Norm for sending this in via my Discord. So if you want to see replays on the channel, feel free to join my Discord. There's a link down below in the description. Hope you guys did enjoy. If you did, please do consider giving the video a big old thumbs up and subscribe into the channel for more Total War Warhammer content. Really appreciate the support that's been coming in recently. It's been 
really awesome stuff where we're uh, really snowballing and kind of growing more and more. Anyway, for the builds, Arcane Phoenix, it, it's, it's uh, great to see it actually being used and being used effectively. 76 kills is very good and I think this is one of the matchups where it uh, certainly has a nice niche. That fire damage really helps deal with Grom who is quite often picked here as well as Trolls as and the uh, Hag as well. And green skins do tend to bunch up so those flame storms can break the back of their... Um, kind of melee core very very quickly you can even float in the back lines drop it on some goblins break their leadership and kind of keep them away from the battle at the same time the Elena reaver pick is something i'm a big fan of but uh sword masters of hoef are something that's very cool to see as well unfortunately for high elves they're very expensive in general so their elite troops aren't seen terribly often because they're kind of extortionately priced but 112 kills and 76 kills they did hold the center pocket for a reasonable amount of time but the savage orc Biggins were uh, kind of real tanks in that centre and uh, drove the Greenskin forces nearly to victory before uh, slowly being kind of ground down by the mobility and cycle charging coming in from the aerial threat of the High Elves. Anyway guys, hope you enjoyed. Until next time, peace, peace, and as always, stay awesome.